Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Lillian Ong. I'm glad to be back again with you. The last time I saw you was two weeks ago. So we have something exciting to share with you today. And before we start, let's have a prayer. Heavenly Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I thank you, Lord, because we are privileged to be called the citizen of the kingdom. Not only that, we are being promoted to be the kings of the kingdom. And Lord, I thank you as to this afternoon, it's not I who teach the people, but it is you who will talk through me, speak through me, and impart to them what you have in heavenly places that we are all raised up together in heavenly places to have authority over dominion and principalities, over the ruler of darkness and every power of the enemy. Lord, we're sitting in the right hand by the Father in Christ Jesus. I pray, O oh God, that our mindset are in heavenly places. Our mindset is not of things of the world. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You know, uh, good afternoon again. And I'm excited that I can be back and minister to you. And when God is about to do something new in your life, sometimes he has to tear everything down, shut everything down, make a new change in your life. And it, does, it, it is hurtful, it is painful, but he has something better for you. So before you really can taste and really can feel and can really walk in the kingdom mindset, a lot of time we have to go through a lot of tribulation. And it's not easy because the Bible said, narrow is the way to lead to salvation. It's narrow because it's so tight. You feel like you're being squeezed. You feel like being pushed. You, you can't move move back, you cannot go forward, but everything's so tight, even taking your steps. To the right is a wall, the left is the wall, and everything's just so confined. Just like every fruit juice, when you are squeezing it, that's how, how you get the juice out. And the same thing, when we're under pressure in our life, the good things will come out of it, but it's painful. <clears throat> now we're gonna talk an example how a simple boy who was a shepherd, when he was a boy, he was chosen by God. And of course, you know the story about King David. But before he became a king, he was pursued by King Saul, who David will replace in the future. But David know that King Saul was anointed and chosen by God. And David, dare not touch the anointed one of King Saul. David was pursued for many years. <clears throat> so we're gonna come down to the teaching, not just about King David. <clears throat> Before he become a king, he has to go through a lot of pain. And during this time, he went through war after war after war. Go figure. The same thing with your life. First you become Christian. You start losing friends. Not only that, your family is not happy. Not only that, and then the next thing, your job's not happy with you because the changes, because your people cannot hang out with you on Saturday night and drinking. It's just one after another. You think the battle is over. No, another one is coming, and another one is coming. And every battle you have to fight you are an overcomer. When you stay focused on Jesus, he will give you the faith and the strength. And you're gonna go higher and higher and higher to your destiny where God called you what you want supposed to be. So King David was fighting war after war after war that even he could not stay in the land of Judah of Israel because King Saul was pursuing him even in his own land that David has to run to Ziklag. Now, during this time, 
Let's read 1 Samuel 25. Can we have the slide? 1 Samuel, King, 1 Samuel 25. So this is about the, a man named Ma, the, the man in Maon whose business was in Carmel. And the man was very rich. He had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. The name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife was Abigail, and she was a woman of good understanding and beautiful appearance. Again, the man's name is Nabal, his wife's name is Abigail, and a woman of good understanding and beautiful appearance. I want you to know, the Old Testament are the five books of Moses are called the Torah. In the Torah, what God gave instruction to Moses, there are things to do and there are not things that are not supposed to be done. One thing to be in the Torah is to always help your neighbor you sacrifice yourself for the sake of one soul, and God will bless you. That's another teaching. So, when it says Abigail is a woman of good understanding, it doesn't mean that he under she understands everybody. It doesn't mean she's just understanding her husband, her employee, because she's a wife of a rich man. You know, there's a saying behind every good man, a successful man, is a good woman. So I want to talk to you how to be the good woman, that you, God will raise you up to be the queen or even next to the king, but in the spirit, you are already a king because in the spirit, there's no male nor female. But in the natural, you can be a queen. Now, the queen cannot be Queen Elizabeth. You cannot replace Queen Elizabeth. It's impossible. But it's just kind of like a parable that you can be next to a very good, successful man from nothing, just being, having good understanding and the favor of God is with you. So what happened was David and his soldiers were hungry and 200 of them were protecting the sheep herder of Nabal out in the field to make sure that Nabal did not lose any sheep or any any of his uh, flocks. In return, David sent a couple of people, to, uh, 10 people, go to Nabal and ask him, would you give us some bread? Because my people are hungry. You know Nabal said, who are you? I don't even know King David. I don't know even who you are. Why should I give you bread and wine? Now that's a little bit against the Torah. Because in the Torah, even Jesus said, do not forget to entertain a stranger. I was listening to one program today, <clears throat> and this person is a name, Bobby Connor. Bobby Connor talked to God, and she, he hears God like an audible voice. He sees things in the natural, in the supernatural. He is just going up and down from heaven and earth. It's amazing. So one time, he was in the conference, and he wants to see Benny Hinn. He saw Benny Hinn in the front. Lord, I want to go see Benny Hinn. And the Lord said, no, nope. you go to the corner and meet that homeless man. Oh, my heart wants to see Benny Hinn in the front. No, nope. the Lord said, you're going to Meet this homeless man. Okay, Lord, if that's the way you want me to be, I'll go meet this homeless man. So he greet this homeless man and say, hi, how are you? I'm glad you can come today. And this homeless man transformed. He was Jesus. And Jesus said to him, I'm glad you come today. It was Jesus waiting to see Bobby Connor was not a homeless man. So you never know if you entertain a stranger. It could be an angel. It could be Jesus. Another supernatural experience. You know, 2014, 
I have to do fundraising to raise 100,000 to do a line in the sand for solemn assembly for 20,000 people. You know, financially, it was difficult for everybody, so most of the burden fell on me. Whether we're going to go on with this program or not, it's up to me. And I was prostrate on the floor that day, asking God the real direction that I don't do this emotionally. Of course, people say, well, they predicted earthquake. It never happened in Southern California. They predicted this many, many years ago. But little that people know, there was many, many of us who prayed, including the call, Azusa Now, which was last month. And then uh, the call was 19, uh, uh, 2001. And a lot of group praying for California. And this time, 2014, I know people don't believe the earthquake can happen, and they call it false prophecy. We cannot call Jonah is a false prophet because God changed his mind when he sees the people repent. The same thing in 2014. He said, pray for California. So I did that. When I was on my face, I wasn't sure if I should do it or not. A man from Syria that we support his ministry, Pastor Rashid, got a visitation. That moment I was crying, my phone rang, and I picked up the phone. It was him from Syria calling me. Hi, Sister Lillian, how are you? I said, fine, Father Rashid. I am with the Lord, but I compelled to pick up the phone. I need an answer from the Lord. Do it whatever the Lord asks you to do, sister, because it's all worth it. Let me tell you, sister, yesterday there was a uh, homeless person. He needed food to eat. And you know my situation, sister. The ISIS bombed my tent. So Pastor Rashid sold his house to support all the widows and the orphans. And he lived in the tent in Syria, in the refugee camp. And his tent got bombed. So all he had is scatter a utensil for the kitchenette and just a sleeping bag, one piece of bread and one tomato. And this stranger came to him, hungry, said, do you have something for me to eat? Pastor Rashid said, all I have is one week old bread and one tomato. Well, give it to me. And the stranger holds the bread in his hand just about a minute, and then he broke his, the bread in half and gave it to Pastor Rashid to eat. Pastor Rashid said, I cannot eat, so this is my fasting. And the guy said, eat, I give you permission to break the fasting. He spoke with authority, so Pastor Rashid ate. Wow, it tastes like a bread came out of the oven. And then he, the stranger cut tomato in half and blessed it. Gave the other half tomato to Pastor Rashid. Eat this tomato. And wow, it was the best tasting tomato he ever tasted. And the stranger said, Rashid, I know you're tired and you want to die. You know, this Pastor Rashid has been beaten. He went to the hospital many times. He got heart attack twice. He had open heart surgery. You know, he, he, was, uh, he was really almost being persecuted many times, but he continued preaching the gospel. And he said, many people pray for you, the stranger told Pastor Rashid. And these are the people's name. And he mentioned my name, Lillian. I was crying even more. And he said, sister, the stranger know your name. For some reason, he came yesterday. I want to encourage you that do what the Lord asks you to do. What I'm seeing here, a stranger could be angel, could be Jesus. So in this case, Nabal doesn't want to even pay attention. Who's King David? A stranger, the employee, or the servant, or the soldiers. So he just continued having party and having his own feast. And King David, you know the story. King David got upset. 
and he's about to kill Nabal's household, and no man should leave to live. And guess one of the servants told Abigail, Madam, King David came here, the, he sent his servant to get some bread, but your husband will not give anything, and he's about to come here to kill all the males. Abigail understand this can be a cruel judgment. But on the other hand, Abigail understand our God. Our God is merciful. And Abigail said, surely I am going to bring some bread, some raisins, whatever the king is asking, and just go forth right now, and I will follow behind you. So when she met King David, she fell on his face and gave all of it. And you know what? She said, please, king, look and listen to your maid servant. For my husband's name is Nabal. Nabal is a scoundrel. He is also a folly. He's a fool. He doesn't listen to anyone. But listen to me. If you kill all of us, the male, that is innocent blood in your hand. That's not good. Let the God of your God, our God, judge whatever is evil. But accept my offering. Surely King David thanked Abigail. Of course, King David is emotional too. He was angry. But you know, the love offering that Abigail gave to David has tamed him down. And he thanked Abigail to save him from shedding blood of the innocent people. Or he did not want to kill the people anymore. About 10 days later, Nabal, well, Nabal was told by Abigail what happened. He was so shocked. He probably couldn't sleep. He probably feel uneasy. He know he's at fault. Oh, I don't know what, what's going on in his mind. And he's probably stressed out. He probably looked for a psychiatrist. He probably drinking more. And what happened? He fell and he died. But it happened 10 days later. You know, the, the number 10, if you know, commandment. There's 10 commandments. There's 10 plagues. There's 10 judgment of God. Whatever we do, we will be rewarded by God. Whatever we do, we can also be punished. But I want to share something with you. This woman of influence, when David heard this, her husband died, Abigail became David's wife. Can we have the last slide about the, the meeting? So I want to share with you in June 10 and 11, there's going to be a meeting about women of influence in the kingdom. If you have a mindset of understanding about the kingdom of God, understanding the teaching of the Torah of the Old Testament. It's not about religious teaching, but about every detail what God wants you to do in your life, to your neighbor, to your family, to your friends. And June 10, 11 at M3 Life in Anaheim, it's going to be two days for $69. I encourage you to call Sylvia Sanford Guerrero, Sylvia Sanford Ministry, and you can buy the ticket from there or you can buy it on the phone, or just contact me through kingdomblessings.org. And I want you to, don't want to miss any of the teaching, how you can be like Abigail, from woman from no one, a woman of influence, and she become a queen in a palace. And I hope, if you have not received Jesus Christ, he wants to raise you up, to sit with him in heavenly places in the spirit, so that you have authority over everything. I meet so many Christians that don't have as much money, but they have joy, righteousness, and peace in the Holy Ghost. So let us pray. Father God, this afternoon, I pray, Father God, that the mindset of many women, even many men, that they will be changed to be transformed, to have the mind of Christ. And Father, I thank you for the growth that they're going to have so they can achieve and achieve the destiny you have for them. In the name of Jesus, I pray. 
Amen. Thank you for watching us this afternoon, and I bless you. I hope to see you again in two weeks, and we will continue about women of influence in the kingdom of God. Good evening. Good night.